Well, I talk very little about ritual in all this, uh, right? It is important to realize that your body is the temple of the of God, and that the God who is residing in the temple in is inside your body. This recognition of the divinity of yourself, as well as the divinity of the temple, is important. So, this is just a, a way of saying that just as you keep the, the temple clean, you keep your body clean. What is, the, what is the meaning of saying the body clean? The, my body consists of not only the physical body, which is consisting of flesh and blood, but also my thoughts. Everything that I see is my body. Okay? I am seeing that. I am not that. So that is coming out of me. All that is my body. How do you artificially distinguish yourself from uh, from this uh, sofa or this room? Or there is no uh, distinction really. This distinction is artificially assumed. So, question the ritual is it essential or not? When you sit for meditation, you are uh, um, you are doing a saguna or um, assuming a form of the god or goddess, and because you can you can love that, so you want to have it a form. You can relate to it, or mm, that is in the mind or externally. What I would like to submit is: Is there any dis distinction between between the thought and action? So that is as much a ritual as when you perform it outside. Even when you are performing it outside, that ritual is not complete until the visu mental visualizations are are proper. So there is always a, a u unity between the ritual performed either internally or externally. It can be the ritual. Uh, now, what corresponds to the internal, uh, let us say, nirguna dhyanam, when translated into the external terms, bahya puja. Supposing I am walking along a road. This is what I am doing these days. Walk three miles a day. And <laughs> At each step, I keep on saying one biyaksha after the other. Say Rama. So right foot forward, ra, left foot forward, ma, Rama, 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 Rama. It keeps on going. This is my centering device. Now, as I keep walking, initially for some time, I am interested in looking at the mm, at the houses, at the at the flowers that they arrange in front of their gardens and uh, I am walking on the road, I am co cognizing the cars that are coming and uh, when the car comes I just move to the left and then keep walking and then when the car is not there I can walk on the road. We Indians are like to walk on the road, <laughs> not on the <laughs> And this behavior persists for some time and then after some time you stop seeing the and the different parts, you know, it is just the whole scene you are taking it in. You are not saying that this is a tree, this is a road, this is a car, this is me. All those ideas have disappeared and you are just walking and the whole thing is slowly coming over you, flowing over you. You have entered the Tao of uh, of walking, the Tao of uh, walking meditation. Your cognition has stopped, your thinking mind has stopped, you have got nirguna dhyana. In that, there are no divisions. The picture is there, but you are not cognizing it. 
you see similarly inside the mind also the picture can be there but if you are not cognizing it you merge into that you become one with that you become a part of it then the car is a part of you you are a part of you the trees are a part of you the road is a part of you everything is is one one single whole and there is no time in that time doesn't flow in that the motion has halted it has become a still picture you are not giving any uh, any name to anything so the ritual can be internal the ritual can be external the ritual can be with form internally or with with form externally or without form internally without form externally all these possibilities are there i don't see any essential distinction between the between these these things it is uh, easy to identify mm, the beauty with god but you become the master when you are able to identify everything with god even when it is ugly it is easy to identify the good with god you are a master when you are able to identify bad also with god because that's all, that also is a part of you you must love it and transform it you cannot reject a part of it you cannot throw it away and say that uh, it it won't go away if there is a darkness if there is a shadow you cannot uh, and trample upon it and try to wish that the shadow is not what you have to do is to shine a light on it that light is the is your love you must love it transform it start having a better dream that is the way so the mm, ritual is a means of learning a harmonious and a joyful uh, mutually supportive kinds of action we have the technology that makes a war that's also a ritual but we can have a technology that makes peace we have a techno we, we can use the technology for eliminating the wants of the people so let us uh, start having dreams of those things and those dreams have to start from the people we have to withdraw the power from the from the media which are trying to project these violent images at us how do we do, how do we do that we stop seeing them those things and then they they lose their energy and then they they have to go away if public does not respond to the violence the a- aspect of it then obviously uh, the the advertising industry cannot survive so they'll have to change their advertising strategy to to meet the needs of the people if the people are peaceful then they will demand uh, peaceful things and it has to the transformation has to come from within and uh, we must uh, once having found the light within we must try to express that light don't be conditioned by what other people are s- saying or uh, just go according to what your heart says and your heart always says the right thing your ar- heart always says you love everybody that is because that is unity that is the way the heart functions any other questions have i answered your question okay yes how to remove the negativity mm there is a beautiful book by the the lady shakti gavain and the creative visualization i would advise you to read that but i'll also tell you about um, the the answer to the question cuz the we have anxieties we have fears we have insecurities we lose the job this is a very common or we lose the lover that we had there is a feeling like feeling of insecurity 
as I was saying, that insecurity is a part of you. It is, it is one of your children. You have to accept that insecurity. You have to love that insecurity. It is like a child that is craving for your attention. You must give it that attention. And that atten attention is the love that you are giving. N you cannot keep telling your child that you are good for nothing, you are useless, I will kick you whenever I, I see you. That child is going to become a rebel and uh, is going to break away from you and work in antisocial ways. The way to convert that child is to give it your love and attention, not by rejecting it. So, a negativity is like your child. You have to accept it. You have got to nurture it. What do we mean by nurturing your negativity for some time? Supposing you are lost your job or you are about to lose your job, then be with that thought. Imagine the worst possible kinds of things that can happen when you do not have the job. Go deep into that, into the, into the negativity. Give it your total attention. And as you are doing that, you will go deeper and deeper and deeper. If you are depressed, get depressed. Don't run away from it. Keep with it. After some time, your mind starts to move away a little from that uh, idea. It cannot bear the tension of, of the negativity. It is at that point your training in meditation should help you to let go of this. When your mind starts moving away from this. <laughs> to give you an example, and supposing you are in a room it's absolutely dark and the power has failed, you cannot put, a, put the light on. Mm, and you know that there is a cobra inside that room. Right? You are afraid. That fear is there. What is going to happen? You cannot wish away that fear, saying that, I don't want to have this fear, it will not go, it will be with you. What happens then? You get into an altered state of consciousness, an altered state of awareness, mode number two of your functioning, where your mind has totally become alive and concentrated. Every little sound, every little movement, you are able to perceive, even though you are not able to see anything. You have become the room and you have become the snake also, because you, you are able to feel its movements. You are not seeing it, but you are visualizing through your heart. You are seeing without seeing. You are seeing with your heart. Then you have, you have become the snake and you are visualizing how you are reacting to this. And this is not a situation which the mind is liking very much. It cannot stay in that state for a, a long time. The adrenaline that is being pumped into your system, it induces the fear, but you can only retain this altered state of consciousness depending upon your conditioning and evolution. Up to a certain level only you can take then mm, there are inhibitory levels uh, coming up in your mind and you lose your awareness. Then you become merged totally. At that time, you can let, you will let go of the fear, the fear will go away. I had experienced this at, uh, at Devipuram. 